is our Gimme a Break Classic. You might remember we focused in on dress codes. One of the dress code videos that really got my attention, two of them, was hap what happened to where parents were outraged over a school administrator. It was actually a counselor. The school counselor shaved off the student's head to avoid in-school suspension. You may be shocked to hear what the parents have to say. Here's Christy Diamond. And there was hair all over like that, and it was just plain, like, short, like this. 11-year-old Danny Valdez is sporting a fresh new haircut, but unlike all his other cuts, he didn't get this one here at his parents' barbershop. My reaction was, what happened and who did it? On Wednesday, the sixth grader went to school with this haircut, which administrators say violates school policy. Danny's stepdad got a call from the school about the cut and says he couldn't pick up Danny right then, so he planned to fix it after school. Our agreement was, you come to the barbershop after school, get his haircut, and that was it. But that didn't happen. Instead, a counselor at the school shaved off Danny's design. He took the thing, the clipper out, and um, just shaved it off. Since Danny's parents own a barbershop and know everything that goes into cutting hair, they say their biggest concern is the cleanliness of those clippers. Where did the clippers come from? How sanitary were they? Who's used them before? When have they, have they been? Danny's mom says she agrees with the school's haircut policy, but doesn't agree with how they handled it. They should have contacted me and said, you have to pick him up, um, not take it upon themselves to cut his hair. I reached out to officials with Lee County School District, and they have a different story. They say Danny's stepdad agreed to the cut to keep Danny out of in-school suspension, but nonetheless admit it shouldn't have happened, saying, quote, the district acknowledges the actions taken by personnel were not appropriate. I was really livid. I don't know out of what intention it was done. I just feel like it shouldn't have been done, period. I reached back out to the school district to find out if the counselor who did this will face any sort of disciplinary measures. The district spokeswoman tells me they'll have to review the incident first. And as for the family, Danny's mom tells me she's already arranged to have her son switch schools. Live in the studio, Christy Diamond, Fox 4, in your corner. All right, thank you. This leads us to what happened four years ago. Four years ago, I told you a story about a Flower Bluff student who who had his hair cut by an ROTC instructor. This shit, this, that was shared all over social media. It was shared all over social media and it got a lot of people wondering what was going on then. Here's Crystal Dominguez. On Wednesday, 14-year-old Wesley Benham texts his father to take him out of school early because he says he was humiliated. And I said, why? Then he sent me a picture of his hair. And I said, well, well, what happened? His son told him that his ROTC instructor chopped his hair off without his permission. And when it was my turn, he said, sit down. And I was like, I don't want it. And like, he was like, well, I can just fill out the paperwork. I can get you sent on a Rossi. So I sat down and I couldn't move. I didn't want to do anything. He just started shaving my head. Benham says the ROTC program has inspections on Wednesdays, meaning they go through a checklist making sure each student's uniform and appearance is in order. And, and him being respectful and, you know, of his elders and everything, he didn't want to argue with him. He did. He was he was afraid of getting kicked out of ROTC because he loves ROTC, and in fear of that, felt like he was obligated to do it. So he was bullied into doing this. I went to see myself in the mirror in the school bathroom, and I just saw me. Wesley's father says his son's hair was not in violation, even though his son was out sick during the last inspection. He like still that. was not told he needed a haircut. It doesn't state anywhere that they have the permission or the right to cut their hair off. We didn't get a phone call, we didn't get a letter, we didn't get a note, nothing. Benham says if the school would have told him his son needed a haircut, he would have taken care of it. He says people need a license to cut the public's hair. So that school is responsible for teaching, not, not beauty makeovers and cosmetology and all that stuff and using 
clippers from God knows where they came from. Benham says they spoke with school officials yesterday. What did they tell you? Oh, um, well, we're just as upset about it as you. You know, I mean, I can only imagine. I'm sorry that happened to you, young man. That should have never been allowed to happen, blah, blah, blah. They basically just told us what we wanted to hear so we could go away. Wesley's father says he appreciates the apology, but he wants assurance that this will never happen again. They don't just do what they want to do with our kids. Wesley says he's nervous to go back to school and even to the ROTC program. I, I wish I could just get my hair back, but... That picture you saw was of Wesley. Now, after that story aired, the school district responded saying they're investigating this, but we haven't, but nothing was found because no one even said, I mean, it was Dr. David Freeman back then who was superintendent, so... If uh, there was more to the story, we would know. I would have to get Wesley and the and the dad to come on to tell what happened. So, probably get the sense. So by putting on the Game Break Classic. And also the Game Break Classic was a story we also talked about to where a, f a basketball fan was asked to cut his hair because it was violation of dress code. So, we'll have that for your next classic. Alright, what if you were to develop a, a foolproof lie detector and carry it around with you wherever you go? Who be caught telling lies? You're about to meet someone who says it can happen. And you'll see a test that could tell all about whether we're lying or not. It's part of our news series, which I'll tell you. Stay with us. This week on the broadcast is going to be all about dishonesty in America. A look at how people lie, cheat, and steal to get whatever they want. The question, here's a question for you, because it may, it may be an interesting experiment. What if you could develop a foolproof lie detector and carry it around with you wherever you go? Who would be caught telling lies? Your spouse? Your friends? Your neighbors? Your parents? Even your boss? You? Well, you're about to meet a man who knows all about a portable lie detector. He's going to show you how you can really spot a liar. Here's Sarah James. Misrepresent. Perjure. Defraud. Subterfuge. Dishonesty. A thousand words describe a picture of a world where lying and deception seem to be everywhere. From notorious lies. Are you therefore saying that you have not used that word in the past 10 years, Detective Furman? Yes, that's what I'm saying. To monstrous lies. I would like to say to whoever has my children. To lies in the name of country. I want you to know lying does not come easy to me. But how can you tell if someone is lying? Is it as easy as this father cautions his son in the 1948 movie The Winslow Boy? If you tell me a lie, I shall know it. Because a lie between you and me cannot be hidden. Psychologist Paul Ekman thinks it's not so easy. Most people, he says, including judges, lawyers, police, and even FBI agents, are very poor at detecting lies. But Ekman's made a career of it. Can you tell when someone's lying? I do about 80 to 90 percent accurate, if the stakes are high. And that's really important. It really has to matter to the liar whether they get caught or not. So if the lie is trivial, all bets are off. But if the liar has something to gain by lying, and a lot to lose if he's caught, Paul Ekman will usually catch him red-handed. So you look for discrepancies, things that don't fit. The speech doesn't fit the voice, the voice doesn't fit with the face, the body movements don't fit with any one of them. There's no clue that works for everyone. Take Susan Smith, the mother convicted of drowning her two sons. My children are my life. At first, there was no indication she was lying. But soon, says Ekman, the lie became too difficult to maintain. Our lives have been torn apart by this tragedy. Well, here's Santa. And there's no emotion going on here. She's trying to put some in her voice, but she's not succeeding. It's not in her face. There are no tears. Her face is totally flat. I want to say to my baby <laughs> that your mama loves you so much. See, that is just totally unbelievable performance. That's totally unbelievable. She's trying. 
Besides evaluating general behavior, Dr. Ekman says that a good lie catcher must pay attention to specific emotional clues. Watch Kato Kalin's testimony in the O.J. Simpson trial. Mr. Kalin, you got a lot of money for your appearance on Current Affair, didn't you? Um, yes. Notice anything unusual? Paul Ekman did. Can you back that up? Sure. Oh, that's it. Now slowly forward. A little more. Okay. All right, that's a micro-expression. That's his real feelings towards the prosecutor. Anger. Yeah. Does not like. Oh, it's not like her. Okay, it just comes out for a moment. Yes. Kalen is answering this question truthfully, but the micro-expression, says Ekman, raises a red flag about the line of questioning. And in the very next exchange... You don't have a book proposal? No. Not true, according to revelations since the testimony. And listen to Kalen's voice. You don't have any book proposals out? No. Don't want to do book. A drop in voice level. One possible sign, says Ekman, of a lie. And yet, you seem to not recall anything about it except that you had sandwiches. Having watched hours of John Poindexter's testimony during the Iran-Contra hearings, Paul Ekman knew that the former Reagan advisor's response to this question was out of character. The question was about what Poindexter remembered from the lunch he had with CIA Chief William Casey. First, a micro-expression. There's the micro-expression. That's it. Okay, it's exasperated. Okay, now let's continue. Certainly based on the sequence of events. Then several swallows. It must have been a very important... Swallow. Right there. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And speech hesitations. I, uh, I, I, I think by, by that time... The speech hesitation provided the initial uh, swallowed again uh, briefings to Congress and uh, swallows again. Now he's a fix some water. So how can you tell that he just doesn't have a little tickle in his throat? What it, makes you know possible. that this is? It's possible, but it wouldn't explain the speech hesitations. It wouldn't explain the exasperation. Poindexter was found guilty of lying to Congress, but the conviction was later overturned because his congressional testimony was used improperly. As for that lunch. In all likelihood, he wasn't telling all. It's not proof, says Ekman, but it's an area that requires further questioning. What I would have said if I was there is, what's going on? What, what is it about the sandwiches and the lunch? What's upsetting you? Tell me more about it. Would you be the world's most frightening customs inspector? Uh, I suppose. <laughs> this is where the experiment's going to occur. Paul Ekman has trained customs officials in the art of lie catching and judges, lawyers, and police officers. He's built his technique on 25 years of research at the University of California in San Francisco. In one study, a subject had to lie or tell the truth about an opinion he held. A hidden camera recorded the interrogation. Is this your true opinion? Yes. If the subject lied and fooled Dr. Ekman, he got $50. But remember, Paul Ekman can only catch a lie if the liar has something to lose. So the subject was told that if caught, he would be locked in this dark room for two hours and forced to listen to regular bursts of extremely loud noise. And, uh, it's really quite unpleasant. In the end, Ekman didn't carry out the punishment. Listen to this man talk about his opinion on smoking in public places. What is your position on this issue? Um, I don't agree with it. I don't think they should ban it in public places. Why do you believe that? Well, I mean, um, smoking, like other rights um, in this country, you know, are very important and they should be upheld. How long have you held this opinion? Uh, probably since I was about 17 when I started smoking. Is this your true opinion? Yes. Did you just make this up a few minutes ago? No. Are you lying to me now? No. Is he lying? We gathered some tourists who were visiting Midtown Manhattan, showed them the tape, and asked them. How many of you believe that he was telling the truth? That's seven out of ten who got it wrong. All right, now here's what he does. Um, and what a lot of people do when they are uh, lying, they do a micro expression, but it's not on the face, it's in the body. And what he's doing is he's doing the micro version of a shrug. A real shrug, says Paul Ekman, is not an indication of a lie, but a small one can be a very strong indicator. When it occurs as leakage, betraying the fact they're lying, you see just a fragment of it. I don't think they should have done it in public places. Because I told the truth. Yeah, I mean, so why should I believe you and not him? There it goes again. Seven micro shrugs in all. 
more than enough for Paul Ekman. So he didn't get the 50 bucks? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you busted him. I sit right here in the green chair. In a similar setup, subjects could take $50 out of a briefcase or not. If they took it and got away with the lie, they got to keep it. Once again, watch this man's shoulders. What were your thoughts? Uh, what went through your mind when you looked into the briefcase? Well, my thoughts were just... Short? Um, they were simple to Short? Three. You know, made it even simpler Four. for me. And then, according to Ekman, this liar practically confessed. Did you bring that money with you into this room? No, I did not. And are you lying to me now? No, I'm not. He's being asked, are you lying to me right now? And he for a moment has to think about it. He shouldn't need to think about whether you're lying or not, unless you are lying. No, I'm not. So he's a, he's a terrible liar. <laughs> Almost everybody gets him. Including our panel. This time, 7 out of 10 got it right. I thought he was lying. I believe he was lying. Definitely lying. <laughs> you think he's definitely lying? Definitely. We showed the group another subject. I saw the money, and I just closed the case, and that was it. Notice the wrinkled forehead. Is that a sign? Did you take that money from him? He looked like a dishonest person, like not a trusting individual. I thought he was telling the truth. I think he was lying. I'm not 100% certain. Five said he was lying. Five said he was telling the truth. Did you take that money from him? But listen to his voice. Did you bring that money with you into this room? No. It's getting softer. Remember, that's often a sign of a lie. This center thing in the forehead being held the whole time, plus the voice getting lower and lower, softer and softer, that combination says to me, is in all likelihood lying. Are you lying to me now? But in fact, he was lying. And I find the, find the wallet. Now that you know some tricks of the trade, take a look at this subject. And... Nervous speech hesitations. Well, I didn't do anything else. <laughs> I haven't... I haven't... Shoulder shrugs. Ever steal anything before, so I, I couldn't think of why I should do it now. I don't need it. I couldn't take the risk. An easy one, you say? Clearly, she's lying, just like the others. But the truth is, she's telling the truth. Paul Ekman says she's the classic example of a misjudged truth teller because she's the kind of person who gets anxious when she's under scrutiny. Her shrugs, just honest denials. Her hesitations, just nerves. So the person who's trying to catch the liar has to always consider, would this person, if they're being truthful, be afraid? And, says Ekman, you can't be swayed by common misconceptions, like fidgeting fingers or not making eye contact. For over four months, Watergate has dominated the news media. Ekman is the first to admit that many lies, especially when they come in prepared statements, are tough to catch. I had no prior knowledge of the Watergate break-in. I neither took part in nor knew about any of the subsequent cover-up activities. That was, and that is, the simple truth. As America discovered, it was far from the truth. But not even Paul Ekman knew that Richard Nixon was lying back then. We asked us, is everything okay? How can someone be a better lie catcher? Ekman says you can start by remembering the two basic clues. So it's signs of thinking that you shouldn't need to do, and signs of emotions that don't fit what you're saying. And above all, give them a chance to reveal themselves. They just got to be okay. They've got the more to... someone talks, and the more likely it is they're going to make a mistake that you're going to be able to pick up on. And are you lying to me now? No, I'm not. Ekman also urges people to be a little more skeptical. He says liars often aren't caught because too many of us are ready to believe that others are telling us the truth. And here's another phrase that you may not know is that... I can tell, the only time, the only way I can tell you're lying is if your lips are moving. We're going to continue on the lying subject right now. When we come back, we're going to look at Susan Smith and the parents of little baby Sabrina. We're going to re-watch both of these. See if you can tell the liar. And then we're also going to tell you how you, how you can spot a liar with Dr. Phil.
Stay with us. Look, we've all told a lie before, but you may not know the facts about lying. Here's Dr. Phil. The three facts about lying. Your feet will be pointed towards the door because they want out. They will pause before they answer, and if they say, I swear to God or honestly, the next thing out of their mouth is a lie. Give me three facts about lying. Your feet will be... <laughs> that's, that's one thing. I swear to God. That's the one thing I learned. When you sit there, raise your hand up and say, I swear to God. I swear to God I did not leave this house. I swear to God. Whenever some dead brain idiot says, I swear to God, almost always, next thing out of their mouth is a damn lie. <laughs> it's what the courts say. I mean, I can take Dr. Phil's advice. I mean, it's the truth. Whenever you say, I swear to God, almost always, the next thing out of your mouth is a damn lie. Sorry, I gotta fix my tie. It's how it always is. Whenever you're lying, you're like lying through your teeth. The way you tell that you're lying is if your lips are moving. You have to be more understandable and say, look, I lied. I did it. And sooner or later, someone will fess up and say, yes, I have. Here's an example from the principal's office. This happened in Lemon Bay. One student called, one student claimed that, this is from this student right here. She's Little Miss Innocent. In her case, she called another student by the L word, a lesbian. Do you really think she was lying? Or do you think she was telling the truth? Take a look at this clip. Today, Alice spoke loudly about someone who was a lesbian and used the words effing and I did not say what's on that paper. I swear to God, I have witnesses. I wasn't saying that stuff, my group. Okay, stop right there. Let me replay this. I did not say what's on that paper. I swear to God, I have witnesses. <laughs> you see what she just said? She said, I swear to God. Again, when somebody says, I swear to God, almost always, next thing out of their mouth is a damn lie. I wasn't saying that stuff. My group was, I, I find that so hard to believe, Allison. I swear to God. Again, she did it. I swear to God. I swear to God. Almost always, next thing out of the mouth is a damn lie. This is so, so dumb. I want your work. Look at me. I want you to tell me you never made reference to this girl being a lesbian. Um, I never made reference to this girl being a lesbian. That didn't convince me. I am like a human lie detector, and I can tell when a student is lying. Who hmm? called this girl a lesbian? Andrea. You're telling me that Andrea is the one who's made these comments? Yeah. Hey, this is Mrs. Harvey. Can you please send Andrea to my office, please? I do not feel bad about writing Andrea out because we don't really get along. And so we have to throw each other under the bus whenever we get a chance. Allison had a conversation with you about a student supposedly being a lesbian. Like, we were just talking and Allison said that this girl was a lesbian. Allison? I'm holding my story because I didn't call her a lesbian. Oh, okay, so you're calling Andrea a liar. I didn't say that either. What? One way or the other. <laughs> Allison. Yeah. Enough. Fess up. All right, we were just like kidding around, joking, etc. We weren't trying to be mean, we were just getting a good laugh. I mean, like, 
no one would ever say the stuff that we said about her to her face. Describe a lesbian. A girl that likes girls. Like a girl who kind of dresses like a guy. They look all scruffy and like guys, I guess. Scruffy? Like all dingy and like... So anybody who looks scruffy and dingy is a lesbian. And dress like a guy. They can have long and hair and dress normally. The reality is you don't know. You can make assumptions about someone, but you don't know what they are. And truthfully, is it any of your business? No. Does it matter? Does it affect your life in any way? Not really. Calling someone a lesbian, regardless who said it, and it's inappropriate, and it doesn't belong in school. All right. All right. And you're going to be given one day out of school suspension. All right. And you will just take this as a verbal warning. Okay? Here's an example. You see me now? I'm not wearing a tie. And if someone put in the comments saying, hey, did you wear a tie today? I say I would say yes. They do a point to this clip and saying, "Hey, you're lying to me. You did not wear you did not wear a tie at the 26 minute mark." But what if I were to tell you now that this would be a perfect example to catch a lie because y'all saw that I had a tie on during during the show. But then during the clip, during this clip right here, I took off the tie as an example. Because that's how you can catch people lying. It's when their lips are moving. It's just really how people can tell. People put themselves in a position to lie all the time. Now here's a second clip. This one. This one's from Hopewell, and this student was playing innocent, was being like a, was being like an innocent child. And he just wants to play innocent. So the question for y'all is, do you think he was lying or do you think he was telling the truth? Take a look at this clip. read LaRon's referral, I wasn't really shocked. I've had a few run-ins with him about his insubordination in the past. Read this. When told I would have to call his parents concerning his behavior, LaRon got out of his seat and told the class, you go on, call my mom. She got to come down here and whip your... It was it. Nope. Oh, LeBron left the classroom without permission. Tell me what happened. Uh, nah, we were chilling. Yeah, we're chilling. Yeah. We were chilling. And were you working? Yeah, we was working. Like, I thought I'm done. Mm -hmm. she, she was like, to make sure your name on it, so I put my name on it. I tried to pass it up. She was like, no, I'm not taking it up. She was like, you always got to be the last one. What the referral says is you got up, made a scene, told the class, call my mama. She want to come down here and whoop your A. I didn't even say that to that girl. She's not a girl. She's a woman. She's your teacher. You need to respect her as such. She was visibly upset. She was extremely disappointed in the way your behavior has changed. You can't threaten my teachers that way. But what gives you the right to talk to any teacher that way? Why would you talk to an adult that way? Help me understand why you think it's okay to talk to an adult that way. Talk what way? Being a nice, innocent child? Absolutely not. I ain't talk, I ain't say all that. I don't know what she's talking about. We're gonna ask Ms. Badley to come down here so then we'll discuss it. Fine. It was obvious to me that LeBron was lying to my face. So I wanted to call this teacher down just to get her version of the events that happened. Good morning, Ms. Bagley. How are you? Good, thank, thank you. you for joining us. We were discussing LeBron's behavior in your class. I just wanted to make sure that we get a full scope of what happened so we can get to the bottom of it. Okay. 9.20. LeBron's been there for 20 minutes. No warm-up. No pencil. LeBron, where's your pencil? Don't have a pencil. Get a pencil. Don't have a pencil. Get a pencil. So we had the whole pencil thing. Mm -hmm. 
LeBron and I had no relationship. He passed me at lunchtime. He gave me the finger. LeBron's talking to Bria. LeBron's talking to Hannah. LeBron's talking to Trebekah. LeBron's talking to Daniel. LeBron's not doing the warm-up. And in the process, nobody else is doing the warm-up. Right. And I said, LeBron, just, just come on. Meet me outside. We're just going to have to go call somebody. And that's when you stood up and announced to the whole class, yeah, you go ahead and call my mama. My mama said, you call her again, she's going to come down here and whip your ass. That's not what happened. Oh, I didn't say anything. Lamont, come on. I don't appreciate the the what your mama's gonna do to me. I ain't seen that be true. That's trying to play me. Lamont and I won't really have a working relationship. And it would probably be a struggle until the end of the semester. When she's speaking to you, you need to be respectful. Is that clear? I'm Is that clear? I'm being respectful. Is that clear? Yes I'm or no? Respectful. Answer the question. I don't know. LeBron, you know you should be suspended, right? Yeah. What would you say? You know you should be suspended for this. For what? You disrespected her and you disrupted <laughs> her class. So as a result of that, you 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 will be suspended. You about to turn the furrow land on me, you know what I'm saying? You done? Yeah. Let me know when you're done. Well, I'm changing my class, start doing good. Just trying to play and try to bring me back now. To... Why are you still talking? Trying to rise to the top and try to bring Nick down. Nobody's talking but to you. Man, it's messed up. You don't. Here you go. <laughs> Have a good day. LeBron received a few days of in-school suspension where he'll have an opportunity to reflect on some of the things that he did and the decisions that he made and how he could have handled that situation differently. Now, could you tell he was lying? I did because he wanted to put, sit there and play innocent. That's how I can tell she was lying. I mean, he was lying. Because of what he did. He said, if you call my mom again, I'm going to come down and whoop your ass. That's how he did it. He wants to sit there and say, I never did all this. Instead, I did this. So they want to change the subject and say, oh, well, that's not this. That's how it did that. Here's a second clip. Now here's the final clip. And then, actually, let's take a break here. Coming up. I'm gonna play you the final clip from from the um, the Prince Thomas that involved a student who said a who cursed by Spanish. Basically, he said a bad word in Spanish, but that but he but he changed the subject to where I didn't say this. I actually said that. Could you tell who? Can you tell whether he's lying or not? Stay with us. Welcome back to our to the first of the, of the Give Me a Break series we're calling Dishonesty in America. A look at how people lie, cheat, and steal. We're talking about lying. We're talking about lying here and how you can tell whether you spot a liar. We first did this earlier this season where we, where we told you how you can spot a liar. But this is also going to be part of the series of this week long series, Dishonesty in America, inspired by NBC News. So far, we showed you a professor who who knows everything about lying by carrying a foolproof lie detector. It's in your eyes. Your eyes are your, full, are your lie detector. Then we introduced you to two clips from the Postal Office, all about people who were lying. In the first clip, this one person said, I swear to God. And I told you, when somebody says, I swear to God, the next thing out of your mouth is a damn lie. The second one, he was all like saying, I mean, the girl says, call my mom, she's going to come and whoop your ass. He, but that's not what he said. His tone changed to where he wanted to play innocent because he's an innocent child. Now let's go to this clip right here, to where you swear by Spanish. I've actually watched this clip several times, and by my eyes are watching this, I can I know you already you don't you know what I'm gonna say. Let's just take a look. I hate 
have you here today because of the referral I received from the gym teacher. And uh, according to the gym teacher, she writes, Oscar called me a bitch in Spanish. He later told me he was talking to the ground. He obviously was not. Stuff in my sister saying things because I never said that word to her. And she's just saying that I did, but nobody heard it. So Oscar, tell me what happened. I said, Malika Sea, which, is, which doesn't mean this at all. And I, and I was looking at the ground at the time when I said that, and I told her that. She said, no, you were talking to me. And I told her if I would have said it to her, I would have looked at her like face to face. But what is the word bitch? What is that in Spanish? Puta. Oh, puta. Anytime you say anything negative to a teacher, mm -hmm. curse or call them a name, mm -hmm. is considered verbal abuse. And the policy is like, two days of out of school suspension. The things you read now, I say, I think that's not that. The father was very apprehensive, so I decided that the teacher needed to be here. So I sent for Mrs. Scott. Mr. Pacheco came in because okay. of the incident okay. at, in the gym class um, with Oscar. Mm. And you wrote, Oscar called me a bitch in Spanish. He later told me he was talking to the ground. He obviously was not. Did you hear the Spanish word? Yes, I did. What word did you hear? Puta. That word is really, really big, but he mm -hmm. don't say that word. Yeah. Maybe you hear that or something else. But the and, and I might have questioned you. whether or not I heard it had he not taken ownership to it that first day. His first response was, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the ground. So he took ownership of saying that word, in fact, mm -hmm. and the next day the whole tune changed. Well, that's not what I said. I actually said this instead. His frustration was taken out on me, and it was very offensive to me. This is a classic, he said, she said, and bottom line is what he said was inappropriate. And the thing that really upsets me is that his response to me was, oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'll just have my parents come in and get me out of it like they did last time. Oscar ain't getting out of this one. I'm a little bothered by you would just get your dad to come in. So, Dad, what do you think about what do you think? Now, when I hear that, I say, why can't I say it? Please don't do it again. Mm -hmm. Because it's not good for yourself. Mm -hmm. You cross the line. You will have two days out of school suspension for mm -hmm. verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. And when you come back on Friday, it's a clean slate. Mm -hmm. That's right. I think we're all sad. I do appreciate you coming sure. in, Mrs. Scott and uh, Mr. Uh, Pacheco. I'll try to stay out of trouble because sometimes I can't um, control my anger because I think I have anger problems, but most likely I do. So could you tell whether he was lying? <clears throat> well, because of what he said, he actually said Mari da Sea, which is damn it. And because of what he said, he, he did not say puta until the teacher said that he said this. But the lie would become to where he would bring his father in. Look, it's natural for you to sit there and say, well, you know what? I'm going to be out of this. Get out of this. I'm going to bring my dad in here, this, this, and that. There's no point in you getting out of your parents. You knew what you did was wrong. You have to be responsible for it. So therefore, you have to be willing to sit there and say to yourself, well, you know what? This needs to happen and that needs to happen. All this... All this, this and this and that and the other. There is you no know, this and this and that and the other. But there is common sense out there. Here's another clip. I said we we're going to show one more clip. But this whole lying thing, it's just gotten way, way, way out of hand here. Play it like this. We're gonna play it like this. It's like Chinese prison. If you fess up before I tell you what I know, you'll get off easier. I get in trouble so much, I, I could be getting called out for anything. I mean, it could be from months ago, it could be weeks, could have been yesterday, I don't know. Start telling me stuff you've been getting in trouble for lately. Uh, I'm not doing nothing. I don't know, I was suspended, but I forgot for what. Break. 
I gotta find out why. <laughs> I forgot why. I really I did. swear to God, you kill me. I really did forget why. I hate wasting my time. Oh, I broke a chair. What? I broke a chair. What chair when? Um, in art class. What the heck, man? It broke. It broke. All right, keep going, because I know this is... St we're still not at the thing I want yet. Um... Was I got kicked out of class? Yep. But I understand, not only did you not go down the main office, you kind of, like, went and did your own thing. My body was acting up. From first lunch. Explain to me how it takes you an entire hour to, to go to the bathroom. Well, the the first stall I went in, they didn't have any toilet paper. So I went to the, oh, I had to go all the way, all the way to the other one, get that. And then I was still going. It wouldn't stop. It was an emergency. <laughs> what? Sounds to me like you were cutting class. No, 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 no. You cut the class in order to go to lunch to, to, to see your girl. No, she's not even in that lunch. I think I want to get Kayla down here and find out what's going on. For what? She didn't even do Because that. she needs to corroborate your story, because I'm no, not really she... believing you right now. Is Kayla in your class, please? Could you send her down to the main office? Thank you. This is your last chance. I mean, you can fess up now. It'll go much easier on you if you just tell me the truth. I didn't do nothing wrong. All right, fine. I did nothing wrong. Come on in, Kayla. Hey, have a seat. What are you doing here? Ask her. I think the question should be, why are you here? That's my question. Yesterday, he disappeared for about an hour, and I'm not really certain where he was. If you know he did something wrong, and you don't tell me where he went, you can get in this just as much trouble as he can. No, we're not. Don't get, don't get me suspended for what you did. Tell her what happened. Me? I didn't do nothing. Tell her what happened. All we done. I went across the street because I was hungry. All right. Across the street. What does that mean? The pole in the fence behind the school. I can't believe you. You let school run. Still three days suspension. But ten minutes tops. You take your pass and go back to class. I gotta deal with him. You're still my girlfriend, right? How much stuff was that? Hmm? My stuff. What, that she didn't answer you? Yeah. I'm sorry. Thanks a lot. The bottom line is you spend it for three days outside of school. I have no confidence that, in fact, he will not do this again, but I'm pretty sure he's not going to tell her where he went next time. I really hope she's still my girlfriend. I don't want to talk to her later. She's going to be all mad at me. I'm still serious about her. But sorry if she's watching. <laughs> sorry if she's watching. Can you tell me he was lying? I can't tell. Like I said, I've watched these clips several times because I can tell when people are lying. It's like if you do something wrong, they're going to find out about it. People may sit there and say, I didn't do it. And yet, witnesses can confirm and say, yes, he did this. That's when people are lying. They say, no, I didn't do it. I actually did this instead. Therefore, what you got to understand here is to sit there and say to yourself, well, well, this and this and that and the other. I mean, but, Here's another clip to where... Here's, another, here's a short clip for this one. This student decided... You know what? These students... I'm only, only minutes late. But wait till you see one of these liars. That just... One of the liars has basically a white lie to tell. A big storyteller. Stay with us. Biggie Smalls. Not exactly a rat name. But these two students from East Palace Road High have just come in class late. Now, could you really tell if they're lying, one of them's lying or not? Take a look at this clip and you'll, and you'll maybe answer that question for yourself. 
First of all, yo, Stephen, can I have your hat, please? Are you serious? Dead serious. Please. There's no please in here. You should have not had it on. And you, Harris, I'll take over your whatever that thing is. Thank you. Stephen and Paris, my boys, they always got to be doing something to break school rules. Why are you late to class? We was rehearsing. For what? For a big show coming up. Yeah, well, you know what, guys? How about keeping that outside of school? Dr. Caswell knows we're going to be famous. <laughs> the microphones are my possession. Time to teach a kid the lesson. Partially free, but still a slave like my ancestors. <laughs> this is like, what, 11, 12 days that you're late? <laughs> what? What are you laughing about? This is not a laughing matter. I can explain. Yeah, go ahead. I'm tired in the morning. It's just, it's hard to wake up. You know what I'm saying? I work late. It's, it's just real hard Actually, to wake up. Actually, I heard you're not working anymore. <laughs> He's my infamous excuse maker. He has an excuse for everything, and it's never his fault. My ankle's broken. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah. My mom was bringing me to school, and then she went to hit the train, and she was experiencing a speed demon, and the tires came flying right off. Like, squirrels jumping on me, just distracting me. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm getting really fed up here. You got no good reason to be late. So guess what? The gig is up. You now need to be in school every day, and you need to check in my office when you come in, or we're going to have a world of hurt. You understand me? Yes, ma'am. Squirrel hit his head and his mother's car tires fell off for some reason. He's like, I'm going to buy that. He's got to be crazy thinking that I would buy that. That's ridiculous. I wouldn't buy that either. Speed <laughs> Blazer, boom. Squirrel to the back of my head. Get off, get off of me, squirrel. <laughs> my mom's speed Blazer, boom. Squirrel, get off of me, get me, squirrel. Get off of me. I work late. I'm very tired. That's another reason you're telling your spot why they have a lot of excuses to make. Whenever someone makes has a lot of excuses, there's always lies that come in. But the truth is, they did rehearsals. So one of those clips, which one do you think was the liar? Was it the tall guy or the short guy? Was it Stephen or Paris? I believe it was Paris. I don't know which one was Stephen or Paris. I think, yeah, Paris was the was short guy. Paris was the liar because he had a lot of excuses to make. But when you're dealing with liars, you basically have to look them in the eye because they have a lot of excuses they can tell. And it can sometimes lead you into a lot of trouble. Here's one more liar. All right, so let's look at one more liar here. This one... This one basically wants to claim that the teacher was a liar when in fact it was a two world word referral. Can you guess what those two words are? Disrespectful behavior. When you're writing when, when teachers write let me tell you, when teachers write office referrals, it's basically like a whole book all about the student's behavior. But for this one, there's just two words. Disrespectful behavior. That's right. As you might see from this next, from, from this last one, it was the student who was lying. It was someone who was lying. So who can you tell who's telling the truth? Was it the student or the teacher? Take a look. Uh, heard you got into it with uh, Mr. Olson again. Tell me what happened, please. I don't know. He wrote it down on the paper, didn't he? I want to hear from you. And that happened. Um, he lies. He lies. Written down right here is disrespectful behavior. That's it? That's it. Well, I don't like him, first of all. And that's pretty much it. You know what? Mr. Olson works really hard and has worked in this school for a long, long time. You can tell by the wrinkles on his face. Now you're just starting to make me mad, Jesse. This is the second incident you've had with this teacher. And I need to hear from you what happened. Now, if you want, we can go walk down into the classroom and find out. Sure. But why don't you just tell me? Because that makes it too easy. I just like to give Mr. Costello a hard time, so I'll make his job a little bit more difficult, because he barely does anything anyway, so. Well, let's go see Mr. Olson and see what he has to say. Jesse's not giving me any information that I can use, so we gotta go see the teacher. Uh, I told him that you had reported him as being disrespectful, and Jesse looked me right in the eye, 
and said the teacher lies. Oh, Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. I mean, I thought you were man enough to be able to man up and say, hey, I did it. I was disrespectful. I told Mr. Olson I wouldn't do my work. I told Mr. Olson I didn't care about the class. I don't need that class to graduate. Okay. But did you tell him that you were so disrespectful it was influencing the other kids' education? Nah, I think so. You think they were disrupted? I think you were just very disrupted. I disagree. You gotta live with yourself, Jesse. I do live with myself, actually. You have people that are trying to help you. If you're gonna reject that help, that's your choice. You can do that. All right. But it's a shame that it's you're missing fine. out. It's fine. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Appreciate it. I hope things turn out well. Yeah, me too. Come on. It's frustrating for me and for teachers when students think that we're out to get them, that somehow we don't like kids or we don't want to see students succeed. But really, that's the furthest from the truth. So you're here to go to school, you're here to learn, get your high school diploma, and get on with your life, Jesse. I mean, that's what I want to see from you, but you keep doing things that interrupt that process. Yeah. I'm going to have you come in on Saturday for detention so you can go out into the office and get past All right. I hope that Jesse changes, but some of that's got to come from him, that he sees us not as the enemy, not as somebody who's trying to keep him down, but somebody who's challenging him to really do his best. It's really not just... It's not really just students who lie. When we return, we're going to hear, we're going to see how kids lie. And even parents who lie, like Susan Smith, we're going to hear what she, like, we're going to rewatch the story from Primetime Live, and then we're going to, and then we're going to, and then also later we're going to talk about the other case of baby Sabrina, the parents who took the lie detector test. Was there the, was there the truth behind baby Sabrina? Was the parents responsible? Even Jean Benet Ramsey. All that's next. Stay with us. While we're on a subject of lying, can you imagine your teacher, as a father, can you imagine your daughter coming home from school one day and saying that her teacher told, told me to keep a secret? And then you found out what the secret was, you told him what not to tell. Tonight's follow break is very, very big. It involves a father who was outraged after a teacher told her daughter to lie. This was one of the biggest reports ever with over 8.5 million views in eight years. Take a look. A, fa a father shocked and outraged after a teacher told his daughter to keep a secret from him. A secret about what was happening to her at school. News 13's Catherine Mazzone has the story. My kids are my everything, and they want to tell me everything. Jonathan Washington knew something wasn't right when he picked up his two kids from Sage Montessori Charter School on Thursday. My son uh, had just told me right off the top that, hey, Marami, you need to tell Dad what happened. A classmate she's had trouble with before asked her an inappropriate question. Have you seen a black penis? Brianna, a fourth grader, was also called the N-word. Then she says her teacher told her not to talk about it. She said, don't tell your dad. Washington was in shock. He went straight to the teacher and recorded their conversation on his cell phone, which he shared with News 13. Why would you tell her not to tell me that? Because I, I thought we should stop the problem. Washington says he had a right to know. I am not going to make a big deal out of, I'm not going to make a big deal out of every single thing that happens to children, especially with... Not a please. big deal? But it was a big deal for Brianna and her dad. Because I don't like things like that, and it scares me. Then, then why do you keep hanging out with these people? Blame it. Blaming my daughter for this incident. Washington is worried about what his daughter is learning. You taught my daughter to lie to me. You were trying to teach my daughter to lie to me. It didn't work. We shouldn't be telling our students that. The school's head administrator, Felix Garcia, also has a problem with how the teacher handled the situation. I'm going to conduct a full investigation. And then depending on the investigation, um, we will look at what needs to be done. And Washington says he won't stop until something is done. You can't do your job. That's all that you proved to me, that you can't do your job as a teacher. That's all. Hang up your coat. Catherine Mazzone, KRQE News 13. Washington says incidents like these have happened several times at school, but he was always notified right away. He says he may now take legal action. And legal action may, not, may be taken. <clears throat> but... Can you tell who was lying? I believe the secret was out.
but lies can turn into secrets. It's like when you have to hide a secret, but then, you're, but then you lie to tell a secret. If you watch Young Sheldon, in that clip, you may remember that clip from Young Sheldon to where George Sr. forgot about a check. It was checked by anyone Sheldon found it. But then, but then, Meemaw decided to just drive drunk and say not to, not to tell anyone, just keep it a secret. She said, she told Mary, I got a DUI, DWI. And then Georgie was part of this. And then he was like, when God is my witness, I've never been a dog track. That's the same thing as say, I swear to God, you want to sit there and tell a lie? Don't ever do that. Never ever tell a lie. It's common sense needs to tell you. But this is not over yet, but we're, we're out of time here. Tomorrow morning, we are going to continue looking into liars. By, by, I mean, this is one of the biggest issues ever. Tomorrow, we're going to look, tomorrow, we're going to look, tomorrow morning, we're going to look into Susan Smith and the parents, baby Sabrina, and as well as Jean Benet Ramsey. The parents who want to sit there and lie to their kids. Can you tell who was telling the truth or who wasn't telling the truth? We, we're going to be looking at the primetime live report all about Susan Smith. We're also going to read statements from. We're probably also going to read school statements. Can you tell whether these statements, whether these statements were a lie, or was the truth? Because a lot of school districts may sit there and cover up the truth. But in the words of Randy Travis, let me play this for you real quick. Yes, the truth is lying next to you. The truth may hurt, but the truth. I mean, you may remember one of the movies. You can't handle the truth. That's how it is. So, tomorrow we're going to continue, our ser tomorrow we're continue the series, Dishonest in America. We're going to talk more about lying. That's tomorrow morning. That come on probably on Tuesday. We're going to focus on cheating or probably more lying. We're going to focus on you on Wednesday. And then... It's all about the dishonesty in America and what the Bible is disseminated with sins. So that's probably all, probably all about the dishonesty in America and what people can do. Just all about the dishonesty in America. That's getting ready for this Sunday going to Monday. A Sunday make up for the Friday that we lost. We'll see you again tomorrow morning for Giving Break Monday. For all of us here at YouTube and Give Me Break, good night.